In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Lord, we thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for protecting us throughout the night, guiding us here safely. We came by different means of transportation. Thank you for bringing us here safely. Lord, I am about to speak. I'm asking you to come and speak through me. Let what well, I'm going to say bless somebody's life here today in Jesus' name. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You can have your seat. First of all, let me thank uh, Pastor Ebel for giving me an opportunity again to be able to share the word. It's always an honor to um, have an opportunity to speak on the word of God. Today we will be speaking on Christ, the donkey, the cult, and you. Christ, the donkey, the cult, and you. Uh, we'll take our text from Mark 11, verses 1 to 10. Try and read that quickly. Are you there? Yep. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered, uh, as, you are, as soon as you've entered in, you will find a cold tide in which no one else has sat. Loot it and bring it, and if anyone says to you, why are you doing it? Say, the Lord has the way, and immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and uh, found the cult tied by the door outside the street, and they loosed it. But some of uh, those who stood there said to them, what are you doing losing the cult? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded. So they let them go, and they brought the call to Jesus and threw their clothes on it. And he sat on it, and many spread their clothes on the road. And others cut the leafy branch from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father, David, that comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple. Uh, so when he had looked around at, at all things, as the hour was already uh, late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Now, if you look at chapter 1 very well, you will see that Jesus was about to enter into Jerusalem and he stopped and he sent two disciples to go and get a call for him. We will be looking at what a call is and some other things, but the question I, ask, I have to ask is, why did you think he had to send two disciples if there was only one call somewhere? Why was there two disciples? And the answer to that will be if you open to Matthew 21, real quick. Matthew 21. I'll read that very fast. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite, and you will immediately and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a call to her. Loose them and bring them to me. So there were actually two. You know, there was a donkey and a cult. That was the reason you had two disciples going. Um, before I go for the let, I will give you some biblical um, history of donkeys and cults. Um, in days past, you know, um, even before the time of Jesus, donkeys were held in very high esteem. They were highly regarded. They were, not, they were not just other animals like cattle and sheep and all that. In fact, if um, you read your Bible very well, if you go to Genesis chapter 20, verse 43, you will see that the donkey was actually used as a symbol of wealth. If you read that chapter very well, um, Genesis 30, verse um, 43, Jacob was said to be very rich. He had so much wealth. And part of that wealth was attributed to the number of donkeys he had. So in the olden days, if you had a lot of donkeys, you were seen to be very wealthy. Apart from that, um, 
the king of Shechem, his name was Habo. And Habo is actually a Hebrew name meaning donkey. So for a king to call himself by the name of a donkey, it will show you that you know donkeys were actually held in very high esteem. Uh, because if you call your child rat or uh, mouse, there has to be a reason why you're calling, you know. Um, nowadays we hear some people called tiger or tiger wood or you know, some names like that. And you, you won't just call your, I mean, if you call your child tiger, you might say, okay, you know, we have tiger wood, it's like the best in golf, you know, and the tiger is like a strong animal. So for a king in those days to call, in, you know, call his um, parents to call him Haba, which actually meant a donkey. Wow, you know, donkeys were very important in those days. And if you remember that um, just the Lord actually spoke through a donkey once, if you we won't have time because of our, our time, we, we cannot go through. If you go to Numbers 22, Verses um, 22 to 41, if you remember the story of Balaam and Balak, you know that the, dog, uh, the Lord actually opened the mouth of the donkey to speak to Balaam when uh, Balaam was becoming a bit stubborn. You know, he wanted, uh, he was interested more in money and he refused to um, listen to the voice of the Lord. So the Lord had to open the mouth of the donkey and speak through the donkey. There are very few verses in the Bible where the Lord spoke through an animal. But I think that's one of them. And even traditionally, it has been portrayed that Mary, you know, when she wanted to give birth, she actually sat on a donkey. Um, I don't know if, if it's in the Bible, but I know traditionally, you know, all the pictures you see and the movies and, you know, traditionally you, you see her sitting on a donkey. So donkeys were actually held in very high state. Even Abraham, you know, when he went to sacrifice his son, um, you know, when God said he had to sacrifice the only son he gave him, he went with the donkey. Donkeys were very, they were held in high esteem. In fact, donkeys were actually what luxurious cars are now, are what donkeys were in those days. You know, if you drive a Benz, people look at the kind of donkeys that you're using, you know, ah, very fine donkey. Very nice donkey, you know, and in this, these days we, you know, we say Mercedes Benz, Homa Jeeps, but in those days it was donkeys. Yes, we had horses, but you use horses to go to war. You don't use horses to just ride on the road, you know. When you want to go out, use a donkey. But when you want to go to war, you use a horse, you know. So let's go back to our text. Just wanted to give you that brief review about how important donkeys were in those days. So the Bible says this. Donkeys were tied. Donkeys were not just tied and kept like that, you know. Donkeys were very important. You took care of a donkey, you kept it in a very good place. But the Bible says these donkeys, these two donkeys, were actually tied. Now let me explain the difference, you know, just to put it in context so that you understand the implication of what happened to these donkeys. If we go back to our text, Mark 11, let's go back to the text. Jesus said they should go to a village opposite them. And immediately they entered into that village, they will see a, a cock that had been tied. A cock is actually a donkey that is not up to one year old. Just to let you know the differences between a cock. It's actually a very young donkey. Maybe about eight months, nine months, but not up to one year old. And I'll give you an insight about the donkeys a bit. At three weeks, two weeks old, donkeys are walking. They can walk, follow their mother up and down. So they're actually strong. So by six months, seven months, they can go about carrying people. But the Bible says this donkey in particular, or this cult, was tied. Nobody had ever ridden this, or, or ridden, uh, ridden this donkey before. Or the cult. So one will begin to imagine that what happened to that cult? Why was it just tied there? Why was it placed in an area, if you come from the left, you will see the donkey. If you come from the right, you will see the donkey. I want to believe that that cult 
the donkey that was next to it was the mother. That's what I believe. But let's let's go back to the Bible. Let's go back to Matthew 21 again. And let's read this verse. Let's go to verse 2. Saying to them, go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Lose them and bring them to me. So you see, a colt with her. So that colt was with her. Meaning that the donkey there was a female donkey. I want to believe that that was the mother of that donkey. That donkey had been tied there from birth. And her mother was also there. Both of them had been tied. 